I thought I would share with you a poem and then a part of an editorial. I'm just going to edit it down so it's not so long. Um, this first poem is titled, Overturning Against All. It is not only a select few who suffer from the Dobbs v. Jackson ruling, the, the overturning of Roe v. Wade, and stripping away women's constitutional protections. It's not only pregnant women affected. Any doctors providing birthing services, especially one specializing in high-risk pregnancies, may leave the states who ban abortions leaving fewer doctors, particularly and tragically, in rural areas. Beyond that, medical students and medical residents won't want to train in states that don't offer this, which is the same practice as providing miscarriage services for women in need. And if that's not enough, the one thing women felt that they had a trusted right to, birth control, that may be taken away from them too. I know this might just be a water cooler talk, but I heard within the industry that when the first birth control pill was released, the Catholic Church, who held stock in that pharmaceuticals company, protested madly over the pill. They complained like mad, but didn't sell their stock as the company made money hand over fist because of this sinful product. And I hear that only after the generic came along and the one drug company got less coin from birth control did the Catholic Church sell their stock. <laughs> but, but let's get away from abortions and to meds because some drugs for it are used for other purposes too. As a woman diagnosed at an early age with psoriatic arthritis, one of the drugs I took was methotrexate. And now people who suffer with psoriasis, lupus, and other autoimmune disorders can't obtain their first line medication, methotrexate, because it is also in abortion medication. <laughs> I, I remember how a single grand mal seizure after that, I was put on medication for it. And that medication was also an antidepressant. Later, I realized that I felt devoid of life then because that drug treated two completely different medical issues. <laughs> Anti-abortion news now spreading like wildfire makes some search for more all-natural herbal options that are touted online from Hogwarts, Pennyroyal, Mugwort, to excess vitamin C. <laughs> But anyone with an ounce of know-how knows that too much of this is critically more dangerous to the actual living human female than its almost ensured failure on an embryo. But I suppose desperate times call for desperate measures when women lose their rights. Because when some states are bound and determined to do this to women, believe it or not, what kicks in for women is their survival instinct as some give rights to the non-living, they take away rights from living, breathing, voting, adults, across genders, ages, and interests. Because whatever overturning this does, it really does affect more than just a select few. Okay, um, I, I stream, thank you, you guys. Um, I streamlined this editorial, um, because I didn't want to take that much time, and my poems often sound like they're prose anyway, and I wanted to share this with you because I wrote this on the 4th of July. I told people on the 3rd of July to have a happy 4th, and one poet said that she wasn't celebrating. She was protesting. Now, I know the Supreme Court hurt all womankind overturning Roe v. Wade, but July 4th in America is a holiday about separating ourselves from when we broke free from a tyrannical rule so that we can say what we want and so we can broadcast injustices and that there'd be no state-imposed religion. Now that I say that, I realize our rights are being taken away precisely because of religion. And then I think about the gallantry of annual fireworks, then of how fascist dictators use pageantry to get the masses in line and feel that nationalism. 
but I I'm infuriated about this overturning of Roe v. Wade. I, I do understand that it was legal when this country was founded and that any rights not outlined in our national, by our national government should be left to the states, which forces me to understand the overturning. But a woman's right to choose was something this country shouldn't take away. I'm just afraid that with the over-religious nature of over half of the states, that more and more women will lose more and more of their basic rights. Pre-law students plan to boycott law schools in states with banned abortions. Some students fear going to colleges in red states after the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Press polls released on Independence Day show parents with kids going to colleges in states like Texas. They're telling their children that they won't pay tuition for, their, for them to go to that school in a state that so supports restricting women's rights. I hear all this when the temperature is a hundred and one degrees outside. Not unlike the room that possesses all your worst fears, room 101. Uh, does fiction become reality when people living in a post in the past want to take rights away from women? I hear news reports of 10-year-old girls who have been raped who might not get into a less restrictive state with judges forcing them to keep what is growing inside of them until it becomes a child. Not unlike them. And this child has to raise something that came because of horror and eventually also ignorance? Is this what this country is slowly becoming? Well, happy Independence Day. Maybe one day women can get their rights back. <laughs> argumentative, argumentative, there I go. Thank you guys so, for so listening. What do you really think? So what's my opinion about this really? And and that actually was an editorial this longer and I took a lot of stuff out of it about, you know, comparing Marines and fireworks in Chicago and there's it's a longer story, but I thought I'd give you the gist of it right there and you know, what? What could your opinion really be? What? I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> but thank